योगेन चित्तस्य पदेन वाचा मन शरीर से वैद्यक योगाकोत्तम प्रवर मुनीना पतंजलि प्राजान शांति 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 so good evening to all of you um we will get started and um, so we were discussing on patanjali yoga sutra we have discussed the chapter 1 and chapter 2 so um, chapter 1 basically it's a it's defining what it is and uh, it basically gives what are the um, components of it what are the concepts that you should know and specially talks about the flavors of the mind right then uh, chapter number 2 discuss which is the samad sadhana pad where what are the five most things that you should do so we talked about yama niyama asana pranayama pratyahara so we talked about those and then the third chapter which is vibhuti pad talks about the uh, dharana dhyana samadhi so we call the first five as antaranga yoga sorry uh, bahira bahiranga yoga where we can actually do all these things externally with our senses the body and all this kind of thing um, so yama niyama basically if you see you need to watch your mouth watch your action and watch what you think right so if you get upset looking at something and if you um think bad of it or think ill of it basically that's to you that goes to that get credited to your account itself right it's not for anybody else so being not violent do not steal and be compassionate and tell the truth be truthful be honesty all these things are like the basic fundamental rules that a yogi or a person in a spiritual path should embark upon right so these are very basic things that you should follow but it's not easy it doesn't mean that just because those are given as the very first ones it doesn't mean that it's easy to follow right it's not easy to follow then once a person master those while you practice that yoga asana is something that you are disciplining your body so i just mentioned early in the morning as well so one hour of yoga what we are doing is actually not for fashion advice right it's basically for it's it's actually you are making certain movements with your body and you are breathing and you are maintaining your consciousness or the mind on your action in buddhist philosophy we call this kaya gata sati right whatever the action that you do with your body you keep the mind focused at it right so otherwise it's just like watching tv uh, while you are eating so while you are eating we just keep on eating but you are watching tv these days so much of news going on so you focus on those and keep eating so what happens is um, you don't know what you ate you don't know how much you ate you don't know where to stop eating right but if you fully focus on what you are eating then you will realize the quantity that you want to feel uh, like full is a very minimum quantity right so yoga asana practice of yoga asana of 1 hour or 2 hour is also whatever the movements that you are doing you need to keep your breath aligned and uh, be focused with your mind right so that is important then uh, we talked about pranayama so according to patanjali patanjali himself says for you to do pranayama this particular asana part of it you have to have mastered so when you have mastered meaning you are able to maintain your consciousness your breath your movements in a regular <coughs> way so if you can do that then 
of course you can go into pranayama practices so that is the air that you bring it in and how to regulate the air flow into different different parts of the body how to regularize it and then you basically know how to inhale and exhale right then pratyahara meaning do whatever it is but do not get attached to it right so that is important then we talked about this dharana dhyana samadhi part of it so we said dharana is basically keeping your mind focused at one point at a particular split second dharana that is dharana then dhyana is you try to maintain it for a prolonged period keep your mind focused at one point for a prolonged period then the samadhi means you focus on something where you lose yourself so right now let me if i am focusing on my breath so you you have a self and the breath so if you focus on your breath totally what happens is you will be dived into that right and then your uh, you will be dived into that and then you will lose the concept of a self there is no a particular person right so up to that are we clear like 50% are we clear yeah 50% understood that's enough right so um just give me a second we will start off with where's my slide Okay, so uh, <clears throat> so we said fixing the consciousness in one point is the harana dhyana samadhi like that. Then <clears throat> these three together we call it the samyama, or which is the discipline, right? So we have to have the dharana. So you should be able to at least. bring your mind to a particular point at least for a split second right uh, so if you don't do that then there's no point of thinking about uh, dhyana right maintaining it at a prolonged period right then if you can't do that then nothing there is called such as a samadhi right so um, uh, one more thing is so knowing all this patanjali yoga sutra uh doesn't going to give you any much right unless you practice it right so we can actually know we can have the knowledge we can actually go to a argument with somebody and prove with the theorem we can back it up and prove okay this is it but it doesn't going to make any sense to you as a person if you cannot uh, you are not uh, practicing it right then patanjali says in the next sutra knowledge comes through gathering of so many insight the brain but pragna comes through the silence and focus of the self right so knowledge and pragna there are two different these are two different concepts right so knowledge is a person like we discussed some time back so you read so many things you hear so many things you see so many things with that you will get so much of knowledge right so when you start to talk with a person you can have a very good rich conversation with your knowledge but pragna is something you see the reality of everything of it what is the underlying reality of that so patanjali says from the mastery of samyama comes the light of awareness and insight which is the pragna right then he says samyama may be applied in various spheres to derive its usefulness meaning samyama cannot be achieved through without the practice of bahiranga yoga so you have to have practiced the first five so then only you are disciplined enough to sit down in a place and focus at some point and keep the mind on that particular thing for some time right then patanjali says trayam uh, antarangam purve bha meaning these three aspects of yoga are internal compared to the form of five that we understood then similarly samyama is external when compared to seedless right 
So seedless is seed uh, now. Sabija samadhi or uh, samadhi with a seed is you have a focal point, you focus on that and then you basically keep your mind at that particular point. But nirbija samadhi means you focus without a focus point. Right? You meaning that you are being able to be with yourself without anything in your mind. Right? Now, how to come there is a big problem. Right? Then, we said um, study of the silent moments between the rising and restraining subliminal impressions is the transformation of consciousness towards restraint. Right? So, we call this Nirodha Parinamaha. Parinama means from one to another, you change. Right? So, from one to another, changing process is what you call as parinam, right? Nirodha parinam means cessation of things, right? So, Patanjali says, so when there are so much of thoughts or impressions are happening, if you can focus between moment, right? So, one thought came to your mind and that will have a uh, uh, being born part of it and then stay there and then that particular thought dies, right? Oh, yeah, right? So, I will increase the size of this thing. So, then, uh, yeah. then what happens is, um, so, a thought being born, thought is there, thought dies. Then another thought being born, thought is there and dies. So, always these three stages are there. Right? So what Patanjali says is one thought being born, now you will be in it and then that thought dies and before the next thought starts, try to be there. So this is a zero moment. Nothing is in your head. Right? So that is a way Patanjali explains how to go to Nirodha Parinamaha. So from you know, normally in our lives, we are from one thought to another, thought to another. So that's our life. That's how it goes. But what <coughs> Patanjali says is, from that point, now we go into more than the content, there is no content. So you focus on when there is no content. So that is what you call as Parinama, not just Parinama, Nirodha Parinama, the cessation part of it. Right? Then he says, Thasya Prashanta, uh, prashanta Vajita Samskarat, meaning the restraint of rising impressions, the restraint, restraint is stop, of rising impressions brings about an undisturbed flow of tranquility, meaning we also call it Chitta Prasadhanam or Adhyatma Prasadhanam or Ananta Samapatti. Right? Meaning, uh, the restraint of rising impression. So now restraint means stop the rising of impressions. Brings about an un, uh, undisturbed tranquility. Right? So some people say, I can't meditate. Why? Because when I close my eyes, everything in this world start to come to my mind. Right? Starting from myself, to my house, to my neighborhood, to my children, to my husband, to my wife, to my neighbors. School, work, everything comes to your mind. Right? So, if those are not coming to your mind, now that is what you call as Nirodha Samapatti, right? Or Chitta Prasadhanam, right? So, it will give you a feeling of tranquility. Right? Then he says, the weakening of scattered attention. Now, scattered attention means having too many thoughts. Weakening of scattered attention is not having too many thoughts, right? So it's declining. And the rise of one-pointed attention in the chitta is a transformation towards samadhi. So your mind is not disturbed through too many things and you are being able to focus at one point. Meaning, let's say in a particular one minute, your mind is working with like thousand thoughts. Now, thousand thoughts get reduced to per minute ten thoughts. Let's see. Then what happens is definitely there is between space, right? 
and they, so when that is reducing 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 you are being able to focus more and more and more right and that is the path to samadhi that's what patanjali tells right then when arising and falling thought processes are in balance so arising and falling thought processes so this is a normal nature of our mind are in balance so it doesn't rise too much it doesn't fall too much right one pointedness consciousness emerges right meaning no new things come or the existing thing doesn't go so basically you can maintain the one pointed consciousness right maintenance of awareness which key which uh, keen in intensity from one pointed attention to no pointed attention is ekagra parinama right so first of all nirodha parinama is having too many things running in your mind it's coming to a, a lower level so you are being focused on one thing right now one thing is there is a thing there is a subject so on that subject you are focusing then patanjali says now when the th thoughts are going out that particular thing what you focused is also gone but you are being able to keep your focus at one point now that is what you call as the ekagra parinam so that's where you say the seer the focal point is now on the seer for the seer by the seer right there is a there is a joke or people have you know created videos about it a particular saint is saying me right now working with me with me to me for me right so this is something like that what we are trying to explain right the focal point is now on the seer for the seer by the seer right so right now meaning you are your focal point is you for you by you right there's nothing external to it right so then the last sutra for today the 13th sutra right i am intentionally going very slow in this right um to yeah i'll zoom this right through these three phases cultured consciousness is transformed from its potential state dharma towards further refinement lakshana and then zenith of the refinement called avastha in this way the transformation of elements senses and mind takes place right now so all these are theory right very hard big words and logically everything makes sense but how we are how are we going to take it to our head and how we are going to practice is the biggest question here right so what it says is there's something like now for an example you take uh you take a take something like this in this picture right a clay pot so how we are making a clay pot is first of all you have the clay dust or the clay soil right clay soil is there in the garden so <coughs> you need to take some equipment and then take some soil and then you need to refine it how you refine it you put some water and you make clay out of it right first of all it's clay dust so clay dust is what is like the dharma in this world it's already there right then refining it what we call as lakshana meaning so we put some water to that and then we make that dust form to a clay form little watery and a clay form right and then once you further refine it you call it as avastha which means the pot but now if you look at this pot this pot is made out of powder right so it was in the powder stage refined and then it's further refined to a pot right so in this way all the elements senses mind get taken place right up to this point is everything clear to you is everything clear i don't think so right so if it is not it's if it is like fully clear that's okay if it's not clear that's better right 
So, uh, now when we say either impressions or thoughts or something what is running in your head, right? So right now, there are certain things running in your head, right? It can be what is happening outside in Colombo. It can be the dinner. It can be your kids. It can be some pets making some noises. Or you may be having some uh, visitors at home. Or you may be, you know, having the poor day vibes, right? Thinking about the poor day. Or you are thinking, you know, the day is coming to an end. Tomorrow we have to work again, right? So likewise, so many uh, thoughts are going in your head, right? So where is the origination point of these thoughts or impressions? Were they there when you were born? Yeah, no. So were they there when you were three years old? Some of them were there, right? So it's like a child being born and then over time we define this is mother, call this mother, call this lady mother. Mother is a female. This is your father, call this person a father, father is a male. Apart from these two in this world, you don't call anybody mother or father. And you do have some next door neighbors that you don't like. So you tell the child, uh, don't talk to them. If at all, if they give you something to eat, uh, if they say hi to you, don't eat it, don't say hi to them. Run inside the house. Apple is red color and this is the shape of an apple. You call it a round and then you eat it. Orange is orange color. It's yellowish or orange, right? Yeah. And then uh, the sweetness of this is like this. You call it sour and then you make juices with it. And it, that has vitamin C, right? So likewise, you or our environment is what programs us, right? So our, whatever our environment programs us only who we are today. So in that case, where is the Prakriti exists? Is it, has, has it been already existed or have you created it? Or in simple words, the world, the, some, the thing called the world that you are referring, was it already there or has somebody created it for you? Or have you created by yourself? Right? So some would say, world was already there and I was born. I utilized some of the resources in the world. Then I die. Right? Another person would say, world was born with me. I lived in the world and I died. The world died. What do you think is the correct one? One or two or three. That means one and two are not correct. Right? So the reality is let's say one, there are two children being born. Right? Let's call them twins, which means all the external environmental factors are the same. One mother, same father, time of the birth is the same, genes of these people are the same, so everything is the same, right? So one is being sent to America and the other one is being sent to Russia, right? So the Russian person calls the mom in Russian. And Russian person, everything, all the impressions are given to the person in Russian, 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 Russian. And the person is now 10 years old. The person is brought up in the Russian culture, Russian food, Russian language, Russian friends, and everything about that person is Russian. Right? So then other person who was sent to America, he is programmed with American English, so he has a father and a mother 
and a neighborhood, environment, education, everything is given through English, right? So the American person, he called himself an American. Right now, you may be calling yourself a Sri Lankan, Indian, right? So your point of view is American point of view, Indian point of view, or Sri Lankan point of view, right? The Russian person, the Russian point of view, right? So now, after 10 years, let's say, let's say this particular mother wanted to give away the children. So that's why one child went to Russia, one child went to America. After 10 years, these two children meet with each other. Right? Do you think the world, how the Russian person sees and how the world, the English person sees is the same? No way. Right? Totally different. Right? So now when the Russian person starts explaining about Russia to his brother, right? Does this American person understand anything? No way, right? If there is a political conflict, they might even hate each other. We don't know, right? So likewise, so the world is created for you by what you gather from your sense organs. And your surrounding environment is also responsible for that, right? And for the other person also, it's the same. So therefore, the world actually has come along with you, right? You have created a world for you. And when you die, your world dies with you, right? So even if I show an equipment right now, I will show a wristwatch, right? So I, if I ask from each and every one of you, what is this? One would say it's a clock. One would say it's a wristwatch. One would say it's a male wristwatch. One would say it's a quartz. Right? One would say it's a digital. Sorry, this is an analog. One would say it's an analog clock. Right? So at the same point, even if you take one subject, right? how it is being perceived through the senses of others are different. So the worlds are different, right? So now our problem is now how to bring this mind, which is filled with world to a one-pointedness, right? That's our mission. So what you need to understand is if you recall your childhood like a one to three months toddler versus you right now, it's like a hard drive, empty hard drive and a hard drive filled with information, right? So what you should do is then you should go back to your childhood. You should go back to your childhood in the sense, not that you know you wear the diapers and everything. No. Basically, your mind, right? You need to remove the perceptions that you have about everything around you. Right? So if I put this, yeah, it tells time. Right? So other than that, you are not processing anything. Even if it tells time, so I will show this, no problem. You just walk away. It's just like when you are going on a trip, so many things are passing. So are we processing and trying to identify every single thing which I passed? Or we just let it go? If, if somebody asked within this last one hour from your window, what did you see? One would say basically nothing. I didn't say anything. But were you keeping your eyes open? Yes. Then why didn't you see anything? Because I didn't take it inside for processing. That's the answer. Right? So, first step of this, so we can't go to the childhood like that, right? First step of this is being open about everything. Not having your personalized perceptions. Right? So, you see a white person and a black person, Suddenly, you should not have like two perspectives about this. 
right? So immediate pay is okay. Both of them are human, right? And at a point, they're not even human. It's a living being. And after that, it's not even a living being. It's part of the whole ecosystem, right? It doesn't really matter. So when you try to clean your mind, right? When you try to clean your mind in the sense, your judgments, your own perceptions, somebody else have given you perceptions. Social media has given you perception. When you try to remove all these things, right? That's where we say when the rising and falling thought processes are in balance. So that means your thought processes are now, it's not fully functional always, right? So, but on the same time, you are not being able to make the mind stop, right? So one-pointedness is something that you have to achieve, but we are not going to stop the processing of the mind to go there. It's like, what is his mouth is used for? Eating, talking, and maybe coughing, and some other things, right? So if I ask you to stop eating from your mouth, what would happen? You will die. I ask you to stop talking, that's also not going to work. Right? But I can ask you to, one is discipline your eating. Eat three times a day only. All your sweets, fruits, uh, your, your carbohydrates and everything, you eat breakfast, lunch and dinner. In between, you don't eat anything. So I can discipline my eating through my mouth. I will also say, don't lie to a person. Don't talk to a person in a violent manner. Don't uh, use rude words. Be always talk to a person in a mid-tone with compassion. So if you do that, your talking will be disciplined. Right? So likewise, the mind is there. So you can't stop the mind from thinking. We can't stop the mouth from eating. We can't stop the mouth from talking. Right? Just like that, you can't stop the mind from thinking or getting impressions. But you can discipline your mind to a particular level. So that discipline is what is Patanjali is trying to explain through the Dharana, Dhyana and Samadhi. Right? And when you meditate as well, you don't have to stop thoughts coming into your mind. You don't have to like compress the thoughts. You don't have to do that, right? Let the mind do its job. There is a nature of the mind, let it be, right? But if you're focusing at some point, you keep on focusing at that point. Then you will realize sometimes you lose the focus. Again, bring the focus, again, do that. So likewise, you have to keep on doing this. That's where we tell about two things, vairagya and abhyasa. Abhyasa, you do it. Vairagya, you don't expect anything out of it. Right? Keep on doing it. When you keep on doing that, then this particular mind, which keep on thinking, 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 understands that even though how much the mind is, you know, doing this thing, this particular seer or the person doesn't get affected anymore. Right? You don't get affected even though how much you think and all. So there are so you see news, you see an accident, you see people dying, you see animals dying, you see earthquakes, you see the sea level rises up, all these things, right? You see, but and mind is keep on thinking. Why? Because you hear everything over your radio or the television all over the day. If you look at your phone, social media, everything comes into your ear, eyes. And if you talk to a person, the first thing is they start uh, talking about politics and everything. So all these senses are giving inputs for you to think, but you are focusing on something else. Then what happens is this is keep on processing, but since you are not giving any attention to that, it will, you know, it will go to a little dying stage. Now what happens is, when it goes to that particular stage, mind understands, okay, this person is not getting an impact. 
this person doesn't act accordingly. The, the person doesn't talk based on what I think, right? Then the mind will take different, different forms for you to tempt to respond to it, right? Sometimes very painful memories will come from the past, right? Or you might feel a very lazy type of a feeling like you don't want to do anything, the why the world is existing, why am I living kind of a feeling, right? So likewise, these, these things will come. But the most important thing is, first of all, you need to understand you can't stop what the mind is doing. The job of the mind cannot be stopped. But you can discipline it. While disciplining it, so how you discipline it? with the perceptions that you have taken, the judgments that you have taken, the conclusions that you have taken, you can be neutral about everything. Right? Right now, the most wanted person, you can also build arguments with this person did this, this person did this, this person did it, because of that, this person is bad. Then the second most wanted person, also you can have. Third most wanted person, you can have. it, But on the same way, just because you may be having million thoughts about them in your mind, nothing is going to affect your life. Right now, you are sitting in a particular place and doing something. Only thing is taking all these things to your mind will disturb you and keep you defocused. Right? So, let, let all these things come to your ears. Right? Let all these things. But if you start to read a book, you focus on that book and you keep on reading that book and keep on understanding the subject of it. Go into detail, detail, detail. If you want to focus on the sea, you focus on the sea, right? Now, when you, while you're focusing on the sea, these thought process come in here. Now you see a drama in the sea. No, you should not let that affect the focal point, right? So you keep on focusing on that. Right? So that is the first stage of disciplining the mind. Right? So you have to have the basic thing is you have to have a target with your life. What do you want to achieve through the spiritual journey? If you have a particular target like that, the way you behave will change. The stuff you read will change. Things that you watch on internet will change. So all these things will always remind you about one thing, right? So then it's actually easier for your mind to be disciplined. It's more easier. Otherwise, I don't think it makes any sense. We complete the whole four chapters of Patanjali Yoga Sutra and you being conversant enough to have an argument with a scholar, right? But nothing has been embedded to your practice, our practice. It doesn't make any sense, right? And uh, knowing this Patanjali Yoga Sutra is not going to give you a certificate or anything or it doesn't going to give you any credentials to your name or anything like that, right? Important thing is we need to practice it, right? So that's why if you remember in the yoga journey, right? When we start the sessions, I told you all, pick a place in your house. Pick one place in your house. Don't keep your yoga mat rolled. You keep it open. So in that particular place, ah, see, Jantan, right? In that particular place, you keep the yoga mat on the floor. Right? And then you can decorate your place with something, whatever makes feel, make you feel good. Right? And then, in front of you, you have to have certain things. Then I said you use some incense sticks or something when you are while you are practicing. Right? So why I'm saying all these things is so if you have a fixed place at your house for to do yoga, whenever you are walking from that place, only one thought will come to your mind. Right? It's not myself, it's you doing your yoga. Right? Always you will get an invitation while you are work, walking from there, walking past by. So I told, so every day you don't need to do yoga. Don't spend one hour even, right? Just spend some quality time on your mat. That quality time can be Shavasana even. Can be Vajrasana. 
can be anything or just sit down in cross leg on your yoga mat right so that is one place in your house which is totally focused towards you right your development your meditation your discipline right when you sit down also in front of you there has to be certain things so that is not visible to the camera right right now what is in front of me is not visible to you in the camera right but there are certain things so when i come and sit down here i don't feel like you know watching a movie in this particular place where i am sitting i never feel like watching a movie right or you know throwing a party here putting loud music all this kind of thing right so that creating that conducive environment also helps you to discipline the mind right that is very very important otherwise i would say okay dharana is this dhyana is this samadhi is this this is this this is that this is it now practice for you to practice there, there is no even a starting point in that case so number one is whatever your environment you are in you no sorry number one is you have to have a purpose it can be a spiritual purpose right even it can be a worldly purpose right so people who want to become a ceo will have everything about a ceo they are working room will look like a ceo's room you get a feeling when you come to your room or office room i am a ceo right like that when you come to a yoga mat you have to get that spiritual feeling to your mind that is number 1 right so maybe if you see a particular person's car even the car looks like the same table looks like the same the person himself looks like the same the person wherever he goes also it reminds him about only one purpose all the time right so disciplining that mind in that way is very very important this is a practical way of going for it right otherwise there won't be a time it will come like you know i suddenly meditate suddenly i attain samadhi oh doesn't happen like that right it's a inside job that we need to work on so number one is so have that purpose number two create a, all your senses are gathering always that particular environment into you so then all other nonsense which is running to your head it will not create a prominence right so this will then actually help you to focus on your spiritual purpose then being one pointed with it and at a point you will totally dissolve in it right where you will not have a self per se right Do, uh, do do we understand that? Yeah. So, what am I saying then? What am I saying is, you have or oh, we have created our own world. So now we can actually change the world in the way what our purpose want us to take us. Right. So you change your own world. so if you change your own world one day based on the based on what you have changed it for you will get dissolved into that right now let's say you want to you you want to become a politician so if you want to become a politician you will not have all these yoga related things around you you will have logic books political science this history that history this particular <coughs> prominent person who spoke about a particular political agenda this country politics the day in which we got independence how this happened that happened and everything so whenever you sit in front of a person like that whenever you start a conversation whatever that conversation that you want to talk about even if you want to talk about a cartoon that cartoon will end up in politics isn't it true it is right so on the same way when you define your purpose right whatever you do whatever you eat whatever you talk whatever it is it ultimately go and stop at that particular purpose right so then 
everything else become irrelevant to you. So then the probability of everything else come to your mind and disturbing you becomes very less. Right? So this is the first stage. Second stage is, of course, now you have defined your own world like that. Now. From that world also, you disengage. For you to be in one point, not to you know be in focused, even that world you yourself has created, it's not required. Right? Then the next stage is basically you are in a place that you can be in a one-pointedness concentration without the unnecessary world without the world that you have already created or anything. There's no purpose for that. Right? Imagine if you can stay five minutes on a day without anything. You, so while you close your eyes, let's say you see a mountain, you see a still mountain. That's it. Nothing else comes and disturbs you. This is called happiness, right? This is called happiness. So you might think sometimes all these dharmic, yogic and all these things are like dark sciences which always, you know, try to say, leave this, leave that, uh, let alone of this and all this kind of thing. Not really. It actually takes you into the place where you are not disturbed. Place where you are not disturbed with your own thoughts. How that's happening is, basically, you are able to focus without a subject. Right? So, um, I think that's enough for today. Right? So, um, we will talk about the other uh, others in future. But throughout this whole chapter, this is something I'm going to keep repeating. <coughs> because otherwise, we will have, you know, theory, theory, theory. We will know 200 sutras, Patanjali Yoga Sutras. We can chant them every day, but no point chanting if you don't know the meaning or if you're not practicing. Right? So we'll stop from here. And um, we are stopping a little earlier. And if you have any questions, we can discuss. Right? Hands in Namaskaram. Inhale. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamutachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Shanti Shanti Shanti